With hundreds of films in dozens of languages and an ongoing outreach that circles the globe, Moody Institute of Science is a ministry that could only have grown from a divinely inspired vision. A vision that God laid upon the heart of an extraordinary man, Dr. Irwin A. Moon. Born on November 3, 1907, in Grand Junction, Colorado, young Irwin started out early in life exploring his world. Though a career in science was his first goal, Moon set aside the physics books when he dedicated his life to Christ and committed himself to full-time ministry. In 1928, at a Christian summer camp in Southern California, Irwin met the remarkable woman who would become his partner in ministry. And on January 30th, 1930, Margaret Snell became his wife. Their life together would be an adventure spanning more than half a century. While pastoring a small church in Los Angeles, Irwin electrified the young people of his congregation by illustrating his sermons with scientific experiments, unfolding a fascinating world of chemical, physical, and biological wonders. And as these sermons from science received nationwide attention, Moon was led by God to resign his pastorate and devote all of his efforts to this unique new ministry. In late 1937, Dr. Will Houghton, then president of Chicago's Moody Bible Institute, witnessed Irwin's dramatic million-volt spectacular at the Church of the Open Door in Los Angeles. Soon after, Houghton invited Moon to join the Moody Extension staff, and in 1938, a partnership was born. A year later, at the San Francisco World's Fair, Irwin presented his sermons from science two and three times daily to capacity crowds. And as the outreach grew, so did the Moon family. During World War II, Irwin added an important new dimension to his work while taking his message to military bases across the United States. He addressed thousands of America's fighting men, and hundreds of them made lifetime commitments to Christ before shipping out to battlefields throughout Europe and the Pacific. In 1945, another of Irwin's dreams became a reality. He called it the Moody Institute of Science. In the heart of Los Angeles, he established a modern motion picture studio, coupled with a fully equipped laboratory where the sermons from science demonstrations could be filmed for distribution around the world. Moon's vision attracted many committed and uniquely talented individuals as the film studio and science lab grew. And in 1965, new facilities were purchased in Whittier, California, which today still house the MIS production team. Imagine all of this without benefit of vitamins. We've built a super high-powered dog whistle. In the science laboratory, it's called a Galton whistle. Talk about your traps. This is a working model of one of the most fantastic traps ever built. Throughout his decades of scientific study and ministry, Moon explored many areas of technology. In his most famous illustration, he absorbed a surge of a million volts of electricity and lived to tell about it. Oh.
Through this demonstration, Irwin not only displayed his skills as a showman, he also made a profound statement about the nature of God. There are two reasons why we must be born again. Moon then went on to tell his audience that the laws of science are really the laws of God. For it is God who gave mankind scientific knowledge. The time-lapse camera, or the time compressor, is just the opposite of a high-speed camera. When Irwin ventured into the field of cinematography, he found a basic movie camera too limiting. So he developed his own technology to speed up time and reveal the glories of creation in breathtaking new ways. Time-lapse photography proved so effective that Moon constantly had to explain to his audience he had not discovered some incredible new formula for plant growth. This is an actual human heart. Just a few hours ago, it was pumping blood through the body of a living human being. As the ministry expanded, Irwin continued to take on seemingly impossible tasks. He developed a machine called a cardiac pulse duplicator, which for the first time allowed the viewing and filming of a beating human heart. This breakthrough received worldwide acclaim. Hello there, welcome aboard 696 Tango. Audiences eagerly awaited the release of each new film. God of Creation, Prior Claim, Voice of the Deep, City of the Bees, Dust or Destiny, and dozens more. Every new release helped establish the global ministry and reputation of Moody Institute of Science. From the Bible, we find that God's greatest concern is our spiritual welfare for all eternity. If the message of the gospel could be more effectively communicated, no challenge would go unmet. And as Moon and his team traveled the world, documenting the wonders of all that God had made, the films they produced would touch the lives of men and women from every culture and walk of life. During the final years of his life on Earth, Irwin Moon caught a glimpse of the eventual fulfillment of perhaps his greatest dream of all. For decades, he had envisioned families owning the films and using them in their homes for personal evangelism. Early experiments with 8mm cartridge film loops were successful, but far too limited in their scope of distribution. Today, more than 30 years after Moon's early tests, the production and utilization of videotapes have made his message of a loving, caring creator a fixture in households on every continent. As Moody Institute of Science enters its sixth decade of ministry, exciting new frontiers of research and discovery are waiting to be explored. The vision that began in the heart of a young pastor still burns brightly today. It is a vision to reach the world with the reality of God's existence and the promise of His love. In 1937, Dr. Houghton saw Irwin presenting sermons from science at the Church of the Open Door on the Biola campus. And after the meeting, he talked to Irwin, inviting him to come and travel for Moody Bible Institute. 
Irwin told him that he was not interested in entertaining Christians, that he wanted to reach the unreached. And Dr. Houghton says, those are the ones I want to reach. So for at least a year, he traveled with Moody Bible Institute. He didn't make a commitment to belong to the Moody Bible Institute organization because he had felt that he wanted to feel free to have the Lord lead him. And he had seen institutions that had gotten away from the Lord. But as he became better acquainted with Moody and because of his past trust in them, he decided that he could trust them with this ministry which the Lord had given him. He had a close association with Dr. Houghton and Dr. Houghton would be in meetings where he was when he could be. And he was in our home many times, he and Mrs. Houghton, as were many moody people whom we had great friendship with. And Dr. Houghton told her, when your job is to dream the dreams and mine is to make them happen. We heard that there was going to be a World's Fair in San Francisco, and Irwin felt what a great opportunity to reach people who were not being reached. He shared this dream with Dr. Houghton, and Dr. Houghton said, well, if D.L. Moody was here, he'd be at that fair. And the result is history. Irwin remembered that D.L. Moody had said that the world was waiting to see what could be accomplished if a person was really yielded to the Lord. And D.L. Moody wanted to be that person and Irwin wanted to be that person. I think that as the ministry grew, he knew that sometime he would be gone he didn't know when that might be, and he wanted the ministry to go forward, and he felt that under God, under the Moody Bible Institute, it could go forward. And after all these years, you can see that it was God's ministry, and he protected and caused it to grow. I have a very large family. I have four children, 10 grandchildren, and their spouses, and 24 great-grandchildren. One was just born yesterday. And they are a long prayer list. And I don't have too many other things on my prayer list, but Dr. Stoll, the Moody Bible Institute, and the people that work there, Moody Institute of Science, Lad and Jerry and the rest there, and Dean and Terry and Sermons from Science are on my prayer list every day. And I pray that the Lord will have His will in their lives. It's a wonderful God that we have, and He does wonderful things. And I'm so thankful for all that He's done for my life.